Hey, thanks for joining in and checking out West Church Lake Norman, a United Methodist worshiping community. My name is Andrea Smith, and I have the privilege of being the pastor here and sharing with you this message before Christmas. It's an exciting Sunday in the life of West. We have our live online service right now, and then at 10 o'clock, the people of West here locally will be gathering together at the high school and wrapping up the Ding Dong Ditch gifts that you were a part of providing Christmas for over 60 people. So thank you. It really makes a difference and it makes their lives feel a little warmer and a little better because people shared love with them this Christmas season. If you are newer to the West community, we would love to know that you're worshiping with us. Uh, If you'll put your name in the chat room and and just if you'll also text the number that you see on your screen right now. I'll read it in just a second if you don't have a visual aid that you can see on your screen. If you're listening via podcast, I can uh, speak the number for you, but we'd love for you to text in. Let us know that you're worshiping with us for the first time or you're newer to the West community, and we'd love to send you a gift. And then you can choose whether you opt in for future communication from us or not. The number is 704 something. 343 Sorry, the little uh, monitor went uh, blank on me for just a second. So uh, if you'll text in and let us know that you're worshiping with us. We have a gift that we'd like to share with you. Uh, We also want to invite you to our Christmas Eve service. That is going to be on Saturday at 4 p.m. live here. And we will have communion, we'll have candlelight, and I invite you to be a part of that with us. So come at 4 p.m. and the message will be non-threatening. It will be talking about how we write our biographies. And of course, we'll reference the biography of Jesus, what Christmas really is all about. But I promise if you have family members that don't want anything to do with church or religion, they will not walk away feeling lesser than or beat up because they're not a person of faith. It's a good uh, doorway actually to share with them what West is all about. And so I invite you to invite your family to worship with you on Christmas Eve on Saturday at 4 p.m. The next Sunday, we will go live with a Uh, service at 7 a.m. It's a recorded service, but it will go live on on Christmas Day at 7. You can check it out. And it's going to be a celebration of what Christmas is all about through West. And you're going to hear more from people other than just me. So I'm really excited about the Christmas Day message. Then lastly, on New Year's Day, I know that uh, you are, you know, just waiting with bated breath to come to an in-person service on New Year's Day. However, we're going to do something different this year. So if you are local or you're going to be in town visiting friends or family, I really would love for you to come to the high school. It's going to be at 11 a.m. from 11 to 1. And we're also going to offer a very similar experience for you. For those of you who really do just want to stay home in your pajamas, but kick off the new year in a great way at uh, 10 a.m. We're moving everything back one hour on New Year's Day because it's New Year's Day. And I've gotten an invitation to a party that doesn't start until 8 p.m. And uh, as much as I really want to go to that party, I still have to work on New Year's Day. So it's uh, it's not probably going to happen because I go to bed, I think, at 8.30. So... uh, If you will join with us at 10 a.m. on New Year's Day, we're going to have some yoga and some meditation and some meditation on scripture, some vision casting for the new year. And then in person, we're going to offer a brunch kind of thing and then uh, this thing called a sound bath. We're going to talk to you more about that this week. Uh, No, we're not going to get naked and have a bath together. It's a sound bath. You're immersed in sounds. And it is a very spiritual experience and you can connect with God, with the divine And uh, so I really invite you to join in with us on New Year's Day as we kick off 2023. So lots happening in the next couple of weeks. And so uh, I really hope that you'll choose to be a part of that with us. Thanks for joining in on this Sunday before Christmas. We hope you find today meaningful and relevant and help you grow in your faith. Thanks a lot. Merry Christmas. Come on, come on. Mm. 
excuses for this and all your mornings from Folgers. So today is the Sunday before Christmas. It is the last Sunday that we have an opportunity to talk about the OG other than the Christmas Eve message. And, and that's that's sort of a culmination of all of it. So we've been talking this message series about what it means to get back to the original, to go retro, to be the OG. We talked about how uh, long ago, back in the 80s, like they tried to redo something that was already good and they tried to remake Coke. And it was probably one of the biggest flops in production history. They spent millions and millions and millions of dollars trying to market this new Coca-Cola so Coke could win the, pep the Cola Wars. And then they flopped. And this new Coke, uh, people they found out really how much people did like Coke because they didn't like the new version. And so they ended up going back to Coca-Cola Classic. And so we've talked about how the original is oftentimes the best. We've talked about how in religion we have gotten away from the original gospel. And so I really, if you haven't been a part of this message series for its entirety, I invite you to go back and listen to the other messages because they have been building on one another. We've talked about uh, what scripture, how we got it wrong, and how we've misunderstood some of the things that are in there and why. We've talked about the Gospel of Luke, who it was written to, and how it recorded the message of Jesus, and many people had recorded it. And the reason that they did so is because it was indeed good news. And we have painted religion to be something very different. We've painted Christianity to be something very different. It's anything but good. It's very rigid. It's very structured, and it does not give a lot of leeway for us to actually be human if we feel like we're always following the law. So one of the things that I wanted us to do today is I wanted us to take a holistic look at Scripture. I wanted us to look at the Hebrew Scriptures that Jesus would have followed, and then I wanted us to took a look at some of the New Testament Scriptures as well. Jesus followed those. Jesus uh, created those. He followed those ways of being, but the New Testament Testament was written based on how he lived his life. One of the hardest conversations that I've had as a parent was Easter uh, many years ago. It was the night before Easter, and my son came downstairs, and he said, I need to talk to you. Usually, that's not a very fun conversation, especially 10 o'clock at night before one of the biggest days in a preacher's career, like we're expected to deliver this really impactful message and that pressure feels a little more on Easter than it do, does on any Sunday. And so I'm like, okay, uh, this is not the best time. But And he's like, it's really important. And I'm like, okay, sure, sit down. And uh, some of you that have been around for a long time at West have heard this story before. For those of you who are newer, uh, it. I was sitting there. I had my pen in my mouth. I was taking notes. And he goes, I just wanted to let you know um, I don't believe in Jesus anymore. I don't want a part of Christianity. And I'm like, okay. And so I think I was so stressed out in that moment that I bit my pen. I chipped my lower tooth. Uh, that's how upset I was in the moment. And I know enough to know not to like beat him over the head with religion. Uh, he was in his final years of high school, so I just said, can you explain to me why? And he said, well, you know, last year when I went to governor's school, I met people from all over, and it was very different than the Mooresville community that I have here right now, and I met a lot of people of different faiths. I met Buddhists. I met people from the Islamic religion. I met uh, lots of different people. And so what I have learned is that uh, they have different ways of faith. And, and I also heard some people in our group that were very rigid in their faith tell them that they were going to suffer uh, eternally, that they were going to be tormented eternally if they didn't believe their way. And he said, I just, I can't be a part of something that is going to be so damning of other people because they are as devout about their faith as the other people are 
devout about Christianity. And I don't understand a God that loves only a select few. And I said, well, you know, uh, that's a lot to unpack. And I think maybe there's a lot of different ways of looking at that other than just one very narrow way. And I would encourage you to understand that maybe the people that were being so adamant about their faith see a very narrow perspective. And could I invite you to maybe look at it differently? And he was adamant that he just didn't want anything to do with Christianity. And he started saying things that had happened that were bad uh, within our realm of existence, things that had happened within the life of a church uh, to me as, as one of the employees and things like that. And I'm like, you know what, look, those folks are human and we all make mistakes. And sometimes, you know, when you're in a job, uh, people do things that aren't ideal and we hurt one another. That's true in any profession. And so he just kept arguing. And I finally said, okay, just tell me one thing. What's your beef with Jesus? Like, I understand all these other things, the constraints of a church, the, the things that you've lived through and been a product of as a preacher's kid, but what's your beef with Jesus? And that was the one thing he couldn't answer. Because if you look at the life of Jesus, of Nazareth, there's not really any way that we can look at it and find harm done. Because he loved and gave and was so selfless in all things. And so our hope for you and for us in this message series is to just think about Jesus. Like only look right now, if you're struggling or if you know someone that's struggling with their faith, only look at the message, the original gospel, the message of Jesus. Because when we do that, we see there's not really any way that anything negative could be taken from it. If there are negative things taken from it, those are our things. Those are human constraints that we've put on the original gospel. One of the things that we've said over and over in the series is if religion is not good, if religion is not loving, then it's probably not the original gospel. It is somehow a way that humanity has twisted it and manipulated it to mean something that we understand and we want it to be. So to make a point this morning, I wanted to do it in a fun way. And so I want you to grab a pencil and a piece of paper or I want you to get your phones ready. And this is one of those times that I wish like Gary Heck, one of our lead vocals, or Bree or Josh or Toby or any of the other folks that you see sing week to week that they were here with me because this would be so much infinitely better. But I've also concluded that people like on TikTok can do and say and be any kind of way and nobody's slamming them. So for today's message, it's only me. But the message is something that I want us to walk away with like forever. And so maybe if it is corny enough or even bad enough, you'll remember this like, oh, wow, that's what Andrea did on the Sunday before Christmas. So I'm just going to give you a precursor. Do not expect uh, a Tony Award performance, but I want you to do this with me. So how many of you have heard the song, The 12 Days of Christmas? If you turn on the radio right now, lots of stations have been playing Christmas songs since Thanksgiving weekend, if not before. One station started in October. So the odds are you've heard The 12 Days of Christmas. We are going to construct our own 12 days of Christmas this morning. It is based on the scripture that Jesus would have lived by or the scripture that Jesus created that they wrote after him, following him. I've talked about that Jesus didn't talk about believe in me. Jesus said, follow me. And so I want us to know what to follow. How do we follow? So in order to do that, we have written the 12 Days of Christmas OG style. And so I want you to sing along with me. I'm going to tell you the phrase first, and then we hope it's going to work with our technology going live and all that kind of stuff. If it doesn't, we're just going to punt and figure it out. But um, I'm going to tell you the phrase, and then we're going to go from there. All right? So I want you to get ready, 
Get your pens and pencils because I want you to remember these phrases. This is what following, this is what the OG is all about. So the first phrase, like on the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. And the reason I'm using true love is that if we embody true love, which Jesus said is pretty much the commandment, love God, love each other, love yourself. Uh, my true love, whatever realm that falls in, we give it to others, we give it to ourselves, and we give it to God, here are the characteristics we should follow. So on the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me, practice listening. That's over and over and over again in scripture, practice listening. So are you ready? We are going to try to do that together. So prepare yourselves. I want you to sing along with me as well. All right, ready? So hopefully you heard that music at home. We heard it here live in the studio. So now we are going to give it our best shot at singing together. Ready? On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me practice listening. It's really low for those like deep voices. It's too low for me to start off with, but the other ones are way too high. So we're just going to have to listen to me growl the first few notes. But the first thing is practice listening. Now, the second thing is to speak without accusing. We practice listening and then we speak without accusing. How many times when we're in a conversation with somebody that we love or, or a colleague or something, when we speak back to them, it's not an, an unbiased way of speaking. Like we have our own biases and so we start to project our stuff on them and we end up accusing them of things. And that's not like Jesus. Jesus never accused. In fact, he would listen to people. He would address the things that they were bringing to him, but never did he beat anyone up with his words. And how often do we do that? Like we need to learn to speak without accusing. And we need to practice listening. So ready? We're going to start again. We're going to speak without accusing, practice listening. Those are our two things. Ready? On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me practice listening. Second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me Speak without accusing, practice listening So, how are you doing? Are you singing along with me? Are you like mortified? If you are, it's okay uh, But you'll never forget the 12 days of Christmas OG style Alright, so we've got practice listening, speak without accusing And the next thing is try to understand. How often do we lose sight of that? How often do we not try to understand where someone else is coming from? If we would try to understand, if we would look at it from their shoes, not just uh, from a bystander, but like really get in their situation, immerse ourselves in what they're going through, what different things they're facing, and then try to understand why they think the way they think, why they're doing the way that they are, then so many arguments and so much hurt and anger would be done away with. So the third day of Christmas, we want to give to one another trying to understand. Let's try again. On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me practice listening. Second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me speak without accusing, practice listening. On the third day of Christmas, my true love gave to me Try to understand, speak without accusing, practice listening. All right, now we are to our fourth day of Christmas. We want to keep 
our promises. And I just wanted you to know that the worship production crew is laughing right now, so I should get them up here with me to sing along, but I'm not going to because I think there might be a coup, and we need them to produce like five more worship services before New Year's Day. So I will not, but um, they're finding this funny. I hope you are not mortified. But uh, so the fourth thing is we need to keep our promises. And one of our promises is like when we're in relationships with one another, whether it's as a church or as friends or as family or as a partner, a spouse, a loved one, is that we promise to love. Like that's just a root promise that we make in all relationships. And if it's a collegial one, it's respect, love and respect. And so guess what? If we don't practice listening, if we speak with it, with accusing, like we're not practicing love. So the fourth day of Christmas, what we need to do is we need to keep our promises. Keep our promises. Now, you are listening in the safety of your home, your car, wherever you are. So I want you to sing along this time. The words are on the screen. They're doing a great job of flashing up the words so you can see them. There is no excuse for you not to be singing along with me with the 12 days of Christmas. So let's start again. Ready? Here we go. First day of Christmas my true love gave to me Practice listening Second day of Christmas my true love gave to me Speak without accusing Practice listening Third day of Christmas my true love gave to me Try to understand Speak without accusing Practice listening day of Christmas my true love gave to me keep promises speak without accusing try to understand <laughs> practice listening look my ADD can only keep me going straight so far all right now the fifth day of Christmas it's like the climactic moment you know like if you ever listen to the Muppets Christmas Carol and Miss Piggy you know she'd be like five golden rings well, so we are going to make our fifth day of Christmas really, really big and important. It is learn to let it go. How many times do we harbor stuff and we hold on to stuff? We pout, we get our feelings hurt, and then we hold on to that hurt, and it just clouds our relationships. Or we've done stuff, we've hurt other people, and we just feel lesser than, and we keep beating ourselves up, and we keep thinking that we're not enough. We need to learn that we are loved by a God that loves us in and through all things. And so we need to learn to let our self-esteem that says we're not worthy, we need to let that go. So whether it's the pain done to us from other people or the guilt that we have that we do to ourselves, we need to learn to let it go. And so like in Frozen, you know, they sing that song, let it go, let it go. We are putting learn to let it go in our 12 days of Christmas. This was written to the church in Ephesus, and it was a message they needed to learn to let go. These words were written after the time of Christ. And so I want you to sing them with me loud and clear. First day of Christmas my true love gave to me. Practice listening. Second day of Christmas my true love gave to me. Speak without accusing. Practice listening. Day of Christmas my true love gave to me try to understand speak without accusing practice listening on the fourth 
day of Christmas my true love gave to me. Keep promises, try to understand, speak without accusing, practice listening. Now here's your big moment. On the fifth day of Christmas my true love gave to me. Learn to let it go. Keep promises, try to understand, practice, speak without accusing, practice listening. Very good. And our worship production team has joined in. So that's making this way less awkward for me. Now, number six, this one is a toughie. Be patient in all things. So over the past year, like a year ago this time, I just, I had some difficult situations that I was facing that I didn't know how to navigate. And I do think sometimes, you know, like when Jesus faced the temptations on the mountain and we call them temptations or test, and he had to navigate those. So Sometimes I think we find ourselves in life, not that God does these things to us, but we find ourselves in opportunities where we have to learn big lessons. We have to learn things that are difficult for us. And so last year I faced a situation that I needed to work through that was requiring from me deep, deep trust, deep trust learning to let my fears of abandonment go and people changing their minds about me and not wanting me anymore. And I had to learn to be patient because I couldn't fix things in the moment. And so I was talking to a friend of mine recently that I hadn't spoken to in a long, long time. And she was like, how's the situation? I'm like, oh, it's, it's better. It's different. And she said, see, sometimes we just have to wait. Sometimes we just have to wait and see. And she was so right. In 1 Corinthians, Paul talks about how we need to be patient. And we need to be patient in all things. What if we practice patience? What if we practice the ways that that can change us if we are willing to just be still and wait. So this is number six. Be patient in all things. Ready? First day of Christmas my true love gave to me. Practice listening. Second day of Christmas my true love gave to me. Speak without accusing. Practice listening. Day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Try to understand, speak without accusing, practice listening. Fourth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Keep promises, try to understand, speak without accusing, practice listening. On the fifth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Learn to let it go. Keep with all promises. Try to understand. Speak without accusing. Practice listening. Sixth day of Christmas my true love gave to me. Be patient in all things. Learn to let it go. Keep promises. Try to understand. Speak without accusing. Practice listening. All right. Now, we are going to do a couple at once so that this does not become totally laborious for you. We are going to do number seven, number eight, and number nine. We're going to do all three at once, and then we'll do 10, 11, and 12. So you only have to go through this singing twice more. All right, so the next thing is to give with expecting nothing in return. Do we understand that that's how Jesus gave? Like, he never expected anyone to give him anything back. He just gave and gave and gave and gave and gave. He gave so much like he gave his life to show us, to teach us that this is what it means to be at one with God, to be selfless. 
is to not jockey for ourselves or use our power and position to get for ourselves. It's to sacrifice everything. So give with expecting nothing. I don't know about you, but I struggle with that. Like, I can do it to a point, and then I'm like, well, what about me? We're not supposed to ask that question, what about me? I, I get so disappointed in myself when I find myself doing that. Um, it's not supposed to be about me. And we are called to give. If we want to be like Jesus, if we want to be the OG, we give with expecting nothing. Relationships have ended. People have left churches over that. Like, I did this and I did this and no one did anything for me. The OG was give with expecting nothing. The next thing comes from Proverbs, and it's a toughie. No interrupting. I am horrific at that. Our staff in general, we all pro struggle with that. Like we'll be at a staff meeting and, and we just get so excited. It's not a rude thing, but we get so excited. We just talk over each other and then there'll be like three different conversations. In fact, we haven't had a big staff meeting in so long because our staff uh, has grown to certain levels that like it's just tough for us all to be in the room and brainstorm without interrupting. So practice no interrupting. That's taken from Proverbs 18. And then in 1 Corinthians, we are taught to trust without wavering. That's tough too. Trust without wavering. Because once we start to waver, once we don't have that just pure trust, the foundation gets rocky. And you can say, you know, well, my trust has been broken and I've been hurt. And, you know, how am I supposed to trust again? Well, part of that's just life, right? Like we're going to get hurt. But if we want to have authentic and true relationships, we are called and taught to trust without wavering. So let's see if we can add all these things to our song. First day of Christmas my true love gave to me Practice listening Second day of Christmas my true love gave to me Speak without accusing Practice listening Third day of Christmas my true love gave to me Try to understand Speak without accusing Practice listening day of Christmas my true love gave to me keep promises try to understand speak without accusing practice listening fifth day of Christmas my true love gave to me learn to let it go keep promises try to understand speak without accusing practice listening Sixth day of Christmas my true love gave to me Be patient in all things, learn to let it go Keep promises, try to understand, speak without accusing Practice listening Sixth day of Christmas my true love gave to me Give with expecting nothing, be patient in all things, learn to let it go Keep promises, try to understand, speak without accusing. Practice listening. Eighth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. No interrupting, give with expecting nothing. Trust me, patient in all things, learn to let it go. Keep promises, try to understand, speak without accusing. Practice listening. Ninth day of Christmas my true love gave to me Trust without wavering, no interrupting Give with expecting nothing, patient in all things Learn to let it go Keep promises, try to understand, speak without accusing Practice listening All right, it is the home stretch, it's the last three Number ten Enjoy with no complaining. 
enjoy with no complaining. Like, there are so many things that life gives us that is good. And, you know, life gives us bad things too, and we all are going to have bad things that accompany the good things. But if we will learn to look in all situations and seek God and say, God, what can I learn from this? How can I learn to enjoy and be grateful with no complaining? Learn to see the good even though there's bad. Our lives will be different. Let us learn to enjoy with no complaining. One of the interesting things is we don't see Jesus complaining other than when people were hurting one another. He doesn't complain about the fact that he didn't know where his next meal was going to come from and they were homeless. I mean, did you think about that? Like they were nomads. They were journeying. The women that were a part of the, their tribe would take care of them and put them up in their homes. But like he did not have a physical address that he resided at all the time that he could go to at night, every night, and find his own little safe haven. Enjoy without complaining. If we would do that, like, man, our lives would feel so different. The next thing is answer without arguing. What if we learn to answer in our relationships without being defensive and without arguing? The next is to forgive without punishing. What if we forgive without punishing? How many times do we say, you know, I'm going to forgive, but I'm going to give them the cold shoulder, or I'm not going to be their friend as much anymore. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. That's punishing. That's not true forgiveness. Forgive without punishing. All right, so we're going to put the whole song together. And I invite you to sing along and let's remember the 12 days of Christmas OG style. First day of Christmas my true love gave to me practice listening. Second day of Christmas my true love gave to me speak without accusing. Practice listening. Third day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Try to understand, speak without accusing. Practice, practice listening. On the fourth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Keep promises, try to understand, speak without accusing. Practice listening. Fifth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Learn to let it go. Keep promises, try to understand, speak without accusing. Practice listening. Sixth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Be patient in all things, learn to let it go. Keep promises, try to understand, speak without accusing. Practice listening. On the seventh day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Give with expecting nothing, patient in all things. Learn to let it go. Keep promises, try to understand, speak without accusing. Practice listening. Day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. No interrupting, give with expecting nothing. Be patient in all things, learn to let it go. Keep promises, try to understand, speak without accusing. Practice listening. Ninth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Trust without wavering, no interrupting, give with expecting nothing, patient in all things, learn to let it go. Keep promises, try to understand, speak without accusing, practice listening. On the tenth 
day of Christmas my true love gave to me. And joy with no complaining, trust without wavering, no interrupting, give with expecting nothing, be patient in all things, learn to let it go. Keep promises, try to understand, speak without accusing, practice listening. Eleventh, on the eleventh day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Answer without arguing, enjoy with no complaining, trust without wavering, no interrupting, give with expecting nothing, patient in all things, learn to let it go. Keep promises, try to understand, speak without accusing, practice listening. And our last one, thank goodness, on the twelfth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Forgive without punishing, answer without arguing, enjoy with no complaining, trust without wavering, no interrupting, give with expecting nothing, patient in all things, learn to let it go. Keep promises, try to understand, speak without accusing, practice listening. So thank you for going through that with me. Uh, you know, if we think about the birth of one who came and lived their life so selflessly, whether you believe in all the parts and pieces of religion or not, like, Jesus was just, like, the kindest human ever. And how doesn't that move us to being different? Let's practice the OG. Let's be the OG. Let's do it this week. I'm going to send these out tomorrow in a devotion. And so if you don't get our devotions, type that in the chat room. And Lexi will note that and we'll get you on that list. But we're going to send them all. Practice singing this around your house like you'll annoy all the people around you. But let's go and be the OG. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, you've given us the ultimate example. I mean, such a beautiful example. May we see and be you in all things, with all things, to all people and things. God, let the message of the Christmas season resonate in us, move in us, change us, so that we can be the original gospel. We will be the only Jesus, the only gospel some people ever see. Thank you for loving us so much that you gave us such a beautiful transformational experience so that we can live lives of joy amidst sadness and tragedy. We can experience joy in and through all things. Thank you for being our God. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I will see you on Saturday, 4 p.m. live stream worship. Thanks.